Hi guys, it's Victoria, and today I'm going to be bringing you a book review of An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekanen. Pekanen? Pekanen. I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. If you don't know, this year I'm starting a new series on my channel where I review a new release every month. And in the month of January, I decided to pick this one up for a few reasons. First of all being, I don't really pick up the thriller genre very much, and I would like to hopefully get into thrillers and hopefully find some that I like. Unfortunately, this is not one that I'm going to be returning to, and I'm here today to tell you why. This is a very popular author duo right now. Last year they came out with The Wife Between Us, and this is their most current release, An Anonymous Girl. It is obviously going for that eye-catching cover that it's just gonna jump at you off the shelf, but unfortunately the quality of this left a lot to be desired in my opinion. Let's start with the synopsis. We are following Jessica Ferris, who is a young girl, I believe in her 20s, and she is a traveling makeup artist. She gets hired to do people's makeup for special events and things like that. And one day she has a client that has an appointment with a woman named Dr. Shields. Our main character, Jessica, is really struggling in her makeup business and barely makes enough money to make ends meet. And so she decides to go in place of this client of hers to the study so that she can pick up some extra cash. When Jessica gets to the study, she is taken aback by the personal nature of the questions and it's not really clear to her why these questions are being asked, but Jessica just answers them for the money and receives a paycheck. She continues to go back every week or so, I think. I think every week she has an appointment to answer more questions. Some examples of these questions are, could you tell a lie without feeling guilt? Have you ever deeply hurt someone you care about? Should a punishment always fit the crime? Things like that. Jessica finds herself growing closer to Dr. Shields because she starts to open up about her past and kind of spills all her feelings out onto Dr. Shields and tells her her life story. And Dr. Shields is there for her and very supportive and seems like a friend. But you could probably guess where this is going. Dr. Shields is not a friend. Dr. Shields ends up kind of using Jessica as a pawn in her own personal agenda, which I will not talk about further because that would be spoilers. I'm gonna put, put the book down because it's a hardcover and it's heavy. I was really hoping to be blown away by this book. Unfortunately, a lot of elements just kind of were okay to me or fell flat or I think just didn't have their intended effect on me. Overall, I was expecting to really be on the edge of my seat the whole time and it moved a lot slower than I was expecting. It was very slow to start. I felt like there was a little too much fluff around learning about Jessica and I felt like we maybe could have gotten to the point a little bit quicker with her so that we could get the story going along. Overall, I just felt this book could be shorter and could have done this in a much more concise way and maybe even have been more effective by being more concise. But before I get more into that, let's start with the pros of the story. So things that I appreciated and enjoyed are, first of all, it's an interesting premise and it was interesting enough to make me pick up the book. I like the idea of a psychological study gone wrong. I like the idea of the psychologist patient twisted relationship. The second pro that I have for this book is a fairly creepy and compelling villain. This book is written in dual perspective with alternating between Jessica's perspective and Dr. Shield's perspective uh, every other chapter. And so being inside of Dr. Shield's head I felt like was both a good and a bad thing sometimes because I felt like she started out as a very creepy character but the more I got to know her and the more I was in her head I actually found her less compelling the more I got to know her. She just didn't continue to be creepy enough for me. <laughs> I would have liked her to stay creepier for longer. I felt like I knew too much too soon. And my third pro for this book is that it did 
keep me reading. There were just small enough reveals here and there that made me go, oh, that's a new piece of information. I better keep reading. So I felt like the authors did a really good job of kind of planting those little nuggets. That's not a word I wanted to use. I feel like they did a good job of planting the seeds. There we go. Let's go with seeds, not nuggets. Anyways, they did a good job of planting the seeds that would keep the reader engaged and keep me interested. Unfortunately, that's where my prose ended. So now for the cons. My biggest problem with this book is the dual perspectives between Jessica and Dr. Shields. This just felt clunky and unnecessary. And like I said earlier, I think it would have been more effective if I wasn't inside of the villain's head and I was just looking at it from the protagonist's side. A perspective just from the protagonist, I think would have made the villain scarier. I think it would have made Dr. Shields more mysterious if I wasn't inside of her head seeing through her eyes. The second con I have is the way that Dr. Shield's perspective was written. We spend almost all of our time reading from a very passive voice and this is something that didn't really bother me at first but I think constantly reading in this tone of voice really grated on me after a while. So to clarify that, we are always looking through Dr. Shield's eyes as she's writing things down basically like about her patient so she'll say you turned around or you picked up the pencil you had a shimmer in your eye we're constantly reading that way from Dr. Shields and it just was annoying I don't really know why it just didn't work I just don't know why we couldn't just speak normally I think it was intended to be creepy and to give you a detached cold vibe but it it came across as just annoying and a little frustrating my third problem with this book is that a lot of things felt too convenient in a couple ways so first of all sometimes the characters were just too dumb there were a lot of moments where the reader obviously knows what's going on based on the clues that have been given but Jessica doesn't pick up on it at all and she's just kind of like oh well, I don't I don't know why that happened and I'll just go to see Dr. Shields again next week and everything's fine and it just seemed like she didn't have much of a mind of her own when it was convenient to the authors and on the flip side of that sometimes Jessica would actually be too smart and it seemed a little unrealistic she would grab the tiniest detail and then come to the right conclusion where there wasn't really a logical sequence to get her there. She just suddenly realized something from a tiny, tiny detail. So just the inconsistency of her character and just finding out things and then running with them and coming to these conclusions that just didn't seem realistic that she could come to, especially after being kind of blind for a really long time. And my fourth con was actually one I already mentioned and that's that it is just too long. I feel like it was a little long-winded and if we, it had been shorter, maybe this would have been a better book. Maybe I wouldn't have been as frustrated that I spent so much time reading this book and ultimately was really let down by it. As far as the star rating goes, I'm somewhere in between a 2 and a 3 for this one. I don't really want to give it a 3 because I didn't enjoy the experience the entire time I was reading it, but giving it a 2 just seems a little too low because I did kind of enjoy it some of the time. So I'm probably somewhere in like a 2.5 range. That being said, I've seen rave reviews all over Goodreads for this book. A lot of people really enjoy it, so you may want to pick it up and try it out if you like the thriller genre. That is another thing. I'm not used to reading the thriller genre, um, so these are just some things that bothered me. I don't know if it's just the thriller genre is not for me or maybe just this book was not for me but I would love to know if you've read this book did you have any similar thoughts maybe you completely disagree with me and that's okay you can you're allowed to disagree with me too but I'd be fascinated to know if you're interested in picking this book up or if you've already picked it up let me know if you had any similar thoughts or different thoughts on it thank you so much for watching and be sure to subscribe if you would like to see more from me. I do my best to post at least one video every week and sometimes more. Happy reading and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.